Have you ever been curious about how ChatGPT is able to respond to all your messages and inquiries or how Google Ads is able to show your advertisements that are relevant to your search history? There are just a couple of examples of what machine learning technology can do for us in our daily life. But imagine all other applications that are possible with machine learning and AI. That's where Epic Programmer comes in. Our goal is to envision a future where these technologies can apply in variety of areas from drug discovery and health care to developing new robotics applications and helping people live longer and happier life. What's really interesting is that despite the vast array of applications, there is a relatively small toolkit of algorithms that you need to understand to grasp how these technologies work and can be integrated into our daily life. So that's what this course is all about, understanding the technology behind machine learning. This course is a result of incredible collaboration between Epic Programmer and some brilliant minds from MIT and MIT Expo students. These individuals have been instrumental in helping us develop and grow this channel over time. As many of you guys know, we have been creating projects and content on this channel for some time now. But today, we are excited to start a new chapter in a journey that will take us beyond our previous work. The reason I created this course is simple. I wanted to teach you machine learning in a way that's engaging and fun, without relying on boring lectures or videos. Epic Programmer is all about making learning enjoyable for everyone, and that's what we are going to do in this course. So. Get ready to embark on an exciting journey of discovery as we explore the fascinating world of machine learning. Make sure to follow along with the regular updates on our machine learning playlist and don't forget to subscribe so that you don't miss any further updates. Our main goal here is to explain concepts in a short and quick format so that you don't waste any time on some long tutorials. Also, note that you can purchase the documentation and articles from epicprogrammer.org. So, this article will be incredibly useful throughout the course. So, we highly recommend giving it a read. Before diving into course material, it's essential to have a solid understanding of vectors, planes, and optimization. We'll provide a brief review here to help you get started. So, in this brief video, we'll explore the relationship between points and vectors in the context of machine learning. In machine learning, we work with data points, which are the elements of our data sets. And also, we wanted to describe them in terms of their position in n-dimensional space. So, let's first distinguish between two concepts. We can represent a point in three-dimensional coordinate system, such as x, which could be something like 3, 2, 2. This point is located in a three-dimensional space, which we can also represent as a vector starting from the origin and ending at the point x. It's important to note that in this course, we'll use the term point and vector interchangeably. We can represent x as a vector by listening to all its coordinate. The ith coordinate in this vector is xi. For example, x2 is equal to 2. Understanding how vectors relate to each other is also essential. We may want to know what happens if we add two vectors together, like a and b. To do this, we can use vector addition and calculate the vector c, which is equal to b minus a. We can also determine the size of the vector or its length using the concept of norm. The norm of a vector in equilibrium space is the square root of the sum of its components squared. Another crucial concept in the dot product which measures how two vectors are arranged relatively to each other. The dot product can be defined algebraically as the sum of products of corresponding components of the two vectors. We can also define it geometrically as the product of the magnitudes of two vectors and the cosine of the angle between them. These two definitions are equivalent and can be used to perform various operations, as you'll see in the upcoming videos. Alright, now we'll be talking about planes and other low-dimensional subspaces of higher n-dimensional space. In this class, we'll be commonly working with n-dimensional space where points are described in n-dimension. For example, we can have a vector x which is equal to some, let's say, three-dimensional space x1, x2, and x3. And we denote this as living in R3. So oftentimes, we'll be interested in vectors which live in separate subspaces of this higher space. So to explain what I meant, uh, let me draw a picture. So here is R3. Our vector here might live over here. This is our vector. But we are actually going to be interested in those points which are described by some linear relationship. For example, we could have a plane which is all the points which fits on this slice. In two-dimensional, we might have a line. Here, uh, this could be described by, say, the plane z equals 3. And x and y are free to be whatever. And in this case, this would be described by the line y equals 1. So this becomes particularly relevant in machine learning when we want to be able to describe the way that points are arranged in this space and what side of the space they fall on. For example, let's look at a simple example when uh, we are trying to draw classification boundaries. So in this sense, we can have some points which are x and some points which are o's. And we want to ask ourselves what is separating hyperplane. By hyperplane, I mean line here. As in n minus 1 dimension, that separates these two sets of points. So here we might find a line here which separates our space. And so on either side of this plane, a line in two dimension will follow our data points. 
So here we can't say if everything less than this plane. On the other side of this plane, these are all O's. And on the other side, they are all X. And that's one of the decision boundaries that uh, we'll be trying to find in machine learning. So how do we find this line? And here we had just wrote this as uh, Z equals three and Y equals one. But there is actually a particular definition in which you can use to define what a plane is. And particularly you want to define a linear relationship between two dimensions that satisfies all of these points being on this surface. So let's say that we have a plane here. So let's say if we have a plane in uh, three dimension, let's draw it over here. We define this plane as having a normal as uh, in some vector shape, which we are talking to be as perpendicular to all of the other points which fall on this plane. So let's call the vector of this normal theta. Additionally, this plane as an offset from the origin. So it's O here, O prime. This is O and this is its offset. Let's call this X hat. So now we want to find all of the lines all of the points which fall on this plane. So if you take another point x, it will only be on this plane. If its vector is perpendicular, draw it over here. If its vector is perpendicular to theta, so we can write like this. So this vector here is going to be x minus x hat dot theta is equal to zero. So x dot theta minus x hat dot theta is equal to zero. This is always going to be constant. So we can define our planes as all of the points which satisfies x dot theta plus some offset theta zero is equal to zero, where these two are defined to be equivalently. And this is the definition of our plane. So any point which satisfies this relationship, this linear relationship lies on this plane. All right, now I'm going to talk about the loss function, gradient descent algorithm, and some tools on how to compute the gradients. The basic tools is uh, we'll use very often in the chain rule. Now. The first two topics will be covered later on in the upcoming lectures and here I'm just giving you some basic ideas and some intuitions about the things that we are going to talk about. Okay, so what is meant by the loss function? The loss function is uh, some way for us to value how far is a model from the data that we have. Okay, so let's look at some simple linear regression model, which is just a model that we can look if we have just one dimensional data just like this. Okay, we have some input value x and uh, we use some parameters theta1 and theta2, which we want to learn in order to predict some y. Let's say, for example, if we want to have a use case that is x is the height of some person and y is uh, shoe size. Okay, let's say that we start with the model and now we have some data points that are something like that. Okay, obviously a model can be improved and uh, we want to learn the better parameters for uh, theta1 and theta2 to better describe our data. So how can we do that? Let's first define the error. Now the error can be defined many ways. For example, let's say that uh, we take it as the vertical distance between our prediction to the real value. So if we write this as an equation or loss function based on x and y will be just vertical distance between the two points. This is for one examples from the data, but we can actually take a set of examples and then take the mean of them. And this is actually this, right? Now we learn about the actual loss function that are being used. And uh, don't worry about that. We'll uh, see many more in upcoming videos. But now let's see what we got here. For example, let's say that uh, we have some kind of loss function that looks uh, something like this, where here I mean that this is theta and this is the value of the loss function. Let's say that this is theta one. So given this loss function, now for a specific parameter that they have, I can say that right now I'm on this place on the graph. And what I actually want to do is to minimize the loss function, right? So if the loss function is minimized, it means my model best describes the data. Okay, now in simple case, I will just solve it directly and find the minimum of the loss function. But many times our model would be very complex and we have a lot of data and actually what we want to do is to use some iterative algorithm. The most common algorithm to use is the gradient descent. The gradient descent is actually a very simple concept. What we'll do is uh, we'll take the loss function that we get from our current set of data points. We'll then compute that with the gradient. The gradient is just a uh, derivative of the function in this point. And we want to move against the direction of that gradient. Okay, so if it's uh, here, we want to move a bit here. 
and uh, we'll get to this point so if we write it down the update steps of the gradient descent we'll want to find a new value for the data which is the old value minus some gamma times the gradient of the loss function okay and this gamma is uh, what is called the learning rate if it's very high then we might move like this and diverge or if our loss is actually if we have some local minimus we might be prone to get stuck in them this is about the loss function sometimes has been called the cost function or the race function it's all the same now let's talk a bit about how to compute gradients so our model will many times be pretty complex functions let's take for example let's say that our prediction model is something like that e to the minus theta x plus theta 2 so now we want to derive that let's say in terms of theta 1 now what we have to do is we need to follow same rule that tells us exactly what to do here let's say if i if i have some function that i want to derive according to x i can actually derive it like that in part so if i want to derive the function now i can actually write something like this okay and what is this z or also known as z so i'll define z just to be this part of equation okay and now actually i have this linear formula on the on the top of that i have this more complex function which is actually called sigmoid function and uh, we'll see it later on in this uh, class so i can actually look at any model as if i'm getting some inputs x and then i'm applying some linear transformations on it which gives me z and then i'm applying on the sigmoid function to get my prediction okay so let's first do the actual c let's start with the simple one uh dz to d theta 1 which is equal to only x and now i need to compute dy to dz so actually what i want to compute now is this guy and you can compute it yourself but what you'll get is that the derivative is this minus z squared okay so now i can just put those things together and use the chain rule to get my final derivative just x times the sigmoid derivative square okay now i can plug in back z to get my derivative if you want to do the same thing for theta 2 then it's simply this one plus okay so this is the chain rule and uh, this is a very useful tool to derive i's more complex function and we'll surely need to use it for deep learning later and that's it now we are moving on to the actual machine learning course so i'll see you guys in the next video peace